the title of my talk is Empirical Underdetermination for Physical Theories in Sister Algebraic Setting. And actually, all the talk is structured around uh, uh, Nora Gorgis's argument, which I'm going to uh, comment. Now, uh, and of course, uh, as it is the paper, and also I would like to uh, dedicate this talk to the memory of a friend calling a teacher Aristides Avegiorgis. Now, here is the outline of the talk. Okay, first I'm going to talk about the problem in general. I'm going to define the problem that we are going to deal with. Then I'm going to present Ara Gurgis's argument against uh, uh, what he called strong empirical underdetermination thesis. And the last part, which is actually my original contribution and not just a reconstruction of an argument, uh, is devoted to the discussion of uh, Aragorgis's argument, the soundness of Aragorgis's argument in terms of theories of uh, systems of N classical particles in terms of the Heisenberg model for ferromagnetism and in terms of algebraic uh, and of models of algebraic quantum field theory. Now, the problem uh, is, uh, I mean, it can, can be defined in terms of the following questions. Namely, uh, can one distinguish the actual state of a physical system from its possible state states on the basis of empirical evidence? And the other question is, can one completely determine the actual state of a physical system on the basis of empirical evidence? So the two problem, uh, my, uh, the problem has, let's say, two parts. The distinction of, the, of, of, of a state, of the actual state, among other states, and the complete determination in terms of empirical evidence. And of course, what I have already said is that the problem is discussed for theories formulated in C-star algebraic setting. Okay, let's try first to understand what, I mean, uh, what the general setting of the problem is. I mean, what is, uh, and let's talk about uh, what a state is and how we, sh we should understand it. Uh, my understanding of the state is in the way that uh, a state of a system is understood in the famous 1964 paper of Hag and Kastler. Uh, that is, a state is associated with a statistical ensemble. Okay. And then observable is an operation performed on the state, on the ensemble, sorry. And now a monitor experiment, by a monitor experiment, I understand a state determination experiment associating observables with probabilities of outcomes. And of course, it has the following features. The number of observables to be measured is finite. The, no the measurement of an observable is repeated for a finite number of times. And there is statistical error in the measurement of an observable. Understood in this way, a monitoring experiment can be represented by a collection of uh, observables and the statistics of the monitoring experiment are described in terms of the mean value of the observables and the variance, okay? Where an ij over an i is the probability of, the, of measuring a ij, uh, sorry, of, of, of uh, yielding the outcome AIJ upon measuring uh, QI. Okay, and of course, this is a very, I mean, uh, general uh, framework within which we're going to work. And let's see how this framework is represented by sister algebras. Observables, the operations are self-adjoint elements of a C-star or of a von Neumann algebra. The states are positively, uh, positive normalized complex values function, functional sorry, on A. And S, by SA, I denote the state space. And any mathematical state belonging in SA that assigns to each observable QA to its observable 
in the collection of a monitoring experiment, a value omega QA, which is found in this uh, interval, is a good candidate for representing the state of the system omega as determined by a monitoring experiment E. So the idea here is that a monitoring experiment does not determine the state of a system, but the state of a system up to a neighborhood in the weak star topology of the state space. So every other state phi, which is found in the neighborhood uh, of, uh, of omega, uh, is also a good candidate for representing the experimental outcomes. Now, <clears throat> In this way, we see. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we see. I mean, from the from the outset that uh, we have uh, what we call the inductive underdetermination thesis, namely that the state cannot be completely determined on the basis of empirical evidence of available empirical evidence, and that the most one can expect is to confine the state within a weak star neighborhood of the system of the algebra of the algebra state space. All states in that neighborhood are indistinguishable with respect to the available data yielded by monitoring experiments. Now, the terminology is changed because what I have discussed so far uh, is related to a, a single monitoring experiment. Here I refer to, um, to available empirical evidence, but I mean, the change is not, I mean, that significant since I understand available evidence either in terms of a single huge monitoring experiment that includes the measurement of a large but finite number of observables or some finite collection of monitoring experiments. But always we have a finite body of evidence when we refer to available evidence. And this inductive underdetermination thesis has been used by, uh, by, um, uh, by physicists who worked in algebraic quantum field theory in order to, uh, to propose, especially in the early days of algebraic quantum field theory, in order to propose what uh, Aristides Aragiorgis has dubbed algebraic imperialism. This is a term coined by Aristides Aragiorgis in his PhD thesis in 1995. And this is also recognized by Laura Ricci and other uh, people who work in the field, I mean, uh, Laura has written that in in his uh, in her book, uh, the interpreting quantum theories, and uh, algebraic imperialism is the stance that uh, most physicists had in the early days of uh, algebraic quantum field theory, and it has a positive and a negative content. Uh, the positive content is that all information about quantum fields is encoded in the net of abstract sister algebras and its group of automorphisms. And the negative uh, meaning of algebraic imperialism is that representations of the net of sister algebras by concrete C star or von Neumann algebras in some Hilbert space do not contain more information than their abstract counterpart. Now, in favor of algebraic imperialism, uh, sorry, uh, the, the idea of inductive empirical underdetermination thesis, uh, if, we, if we translate it from the level of states, which we have analyzed it now, to the level of representations, and instead of talking about states, we talk about representations, we have an argument in favor of algebraic imperialism, which is the following. For every two faithful representations of the net of abstract sister algebras and for every monitoring experiment, if a normal state with respect to one representation describes the probability outcomes yielded by a monitoring experiment, then there is a normal state with respect to the second representation that describes the probability outcomes for the same monitoring experiment. 
This is a mathematical fact translated in the language of monitoring experiments and nothing other than that, which comes from Fell's theorem. And from this mathematical fact, we may infer that no faithful representation contains information about the system accessible by a monitoring experiment that cannot be recovered in terms of another representation, at least in terms of another faithful representation. So representations do not contain more information and all empirically accessible information about the system is encoded in the net of abstract sister algebras and not in any specific representation of it. So the conclusion of the argument is algebraic imperialism, of course, on the condition that, you, that, that one accepts a conservatism about experience, because this is the idea of intactive empirical underdetermination. What do I mean by a conservatism about experience? Uh, I mean that some people may believe that this is not the best one can expect from empirical investigation. Uh, for instance, what about the information yielded by a crucial experiment that is not part of the available body of empirical evidence? In the discussion here, this exactly is not taken into account. Or for instance, what about the information that may be revealed asymptotically in the limit of empirical research? These cases are not covered by empir inductive empirical determination thesis, which uh, is restricted to available evidence, uh, since either they do not refer to the available evidence or they do not refer at all to any finite body of empirical evidence. But in order to talk about all empirical accessible information and not to empirical information indexed by available evidence that one has at a time, then we should consider all possible experiment, all, all, possible, experience, all possible experience that one may have, that is, the crucial experiments that are not part of the body of available evidence, but also what happens if in the asymptotic region, let's say. So in this sense, if one is not conser conservative about experience, they need a stronger formulation of the empirical determination thesis to conclude the desired uh, algebraic imperialism. So in a nutshell, as long as we stick to inductive under determination thesis, we cannot talk about all possible experience. We need a stronger claim and stronger under determination claim so as to move from, uh, uh, so as to, uh, to argue for algebraic imperialism. Otherwise, we, we have just a case in favor of algebraic imperialism limited to what one can know at a time or what one knows at a time by experience, okay? Now, this, this stronger version of the underdetermination thesis goes as follows. The state of a system cannot be completely determined on the basis of all possible empirical evidence now, and two states are indistinguishable with respect to the measurement of some finite collection of observables. Sorry, two indistingu states indistinguishable with respect to the measurement of some finite collection of observables cannot be distinguished on the basis of any collection of observables whatsoever. So, the fact that we cannot completely determine the state is expanded to all possible empirical evidence. And at the same time, we require that the indistinguishability to be, I mean, uh, understood in terms of, uh, in terms of all possible experiments, of all possible monitoring experiments. 
Now, in the formulation of this strong empirical determination thesis, we find the criticism, I mean, the basis of the criticism of uh, Ara Georgis to uh, at least of one criticism raised against the algebraic imperialism. So we need something more to establish algebraic imperialism. If we don't have it, then we cannot establish algebraic imperialism. Just inductive empirical underdetermination under thesis and Fell's theorem and a restriction to the weak, to a neighborhood of the weak star topology in the state space is not sufficient. Now, uh, the next thing, how, yes. Not good clarification, I, I, didn't ex I didn't quite follow. I was, sorry, I'm probably just slow. The part B, the, the so, so, B. so, so I, I couldn't hear you. Can you repeat, please? Oh, sorry. I didn't follow the argument for B. Could you just say that once more? Sorry, I'm slow. Uh, you mean from the strong empirical determination thesis B, the B part? Yeah, yeah, I see how it ah, goes from the Yes, end. yes, yeah. okay. Yes, the, 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 the distinguishability, I mean, uh, the idea of the, uh, to have two states indistinguishable, you should not restrict uh, yourself to, uh, to uh, available evidence, but you should also take into account any crucial possible monitoring experiment that could distinguish the two states. Okay, sorry. So this, uh, maybe I just didn't follow the rhetoric, the rhetoric of it. So you haven't, this hasn't been argued for yet. It's just the statement of what it means. Strong. No, 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 no argument yet. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank okay, you. no argument yet. Just a, a clarification, uh, just a suggestion of a stronger empirical de de underdetermination thesis. Just that. Okay. Uh, and Ara Georgis, now I turn to Ara Georgis' argument. I try to reconstruct it. And uh, Ara Georgis argued against the strong empirical underdetermination thesis B. Okay, because uh, the idea is the following. He wanted to argue against, um, uh, against algebraic imperialism. He showed that, algebraic, uh, that inductive empirical underdetermination thesis is not sufficient. To, to, to establish algebraic imperialism. And then he moved on to suggest another, a stronger version of empirical determination thesis. And then he said, look, I will try now to, uh, re to, to argue against the strong empirical determination thesis so as to uh, make algebraic imperialism collapse. Okay, I mean, this, this is the whole strategy here. So, uh, I guess the indistinguishability of 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 the of the state in terms of uh, uh, of monitoring experiment experiments, we have this thing here. Sorry. Uh, states omega n and omega d in the state space of the algebra of observable. There is a weak star neighborhood omega, of omega n, which does not contain the other state. Since the state space equipped with the t, a weak star topology forms a T1 topological space. So if you have a T1 topological space, you, can, you, you, you should be able to distinguish the elements of the states, of the states by, uh, by, by, by means of, uh, of, of neighborhoods, okay? So uh, the, this is a separation criterion. So uh, the idea, well-known thing from mathematics, and of course it's weak star neighborhood corresponds to a possible experiment. And therefore there is a crucial experiment which verifies the assertion the system is in state omega n and falsifies the assertion the system is in state omega v, omega two, sorry, v is the Greek, <laughs> okay, <laughs> which comes spontaneously <laughs> sometimes. Now, so uh, this is the idea, and as uh, Ara Georgis uh, put it in his uh, PhD thesis, the T1 property can be interpreted as guaranteeing the falsifiability of all claims asserting, asserting which is the actual state of the observed system. And in this way, he argued against the indistinguishability. So, 
if you take into account all possible experiments, all, all possible experience, sorry, then there is some crucial experiment that can distinguish any two states. And this rests on the fact that the state space of the system is T1 without any further assumption. So the strong empirical determination thesis, at least the big component of the strong empirical determination thesis does not, uh, cannot be justified, okay? Or it can be, uh, uh, it can be objected in this way. Now, regarding the first component, things are a bit more different. Things are a bit different, okay? Because here, his argument starts with an assumption that the algebra of observables is, uh, is separable. Okay, unital is rather a trivial assumption. You, we may, trivial, okay, it's not trivial, but we may do it easily. But to say that it's separable, that is, that the underlying Banach space is separable, or that it has, the algebra has a countable dense subset, is not a trivial assumption, and we will see why. Uh, from this assumption, he argued that the state space of a separable algebra is first countable. And then, from the assumption of the first countability, he found a way, he suggested a way to talk about a series of possible experiments that in the limit converge, converge in a non-strict mathematical sense, obviously. Experiments cannot converge, but okay. Uh, so uh, they converge to a state omega. And if in the limit, we have the state of omega in terms of monitoring experiments, then the strong empirical determination thesis is false. This is the outline of the argument, okay? And let's see the details of it. First of all, the transition from one to two, and then we will see how from two, we go to three and then to four. Now assume that the algebra of observables is separable. Now, since A is a unital sister algebra and its state space is, uh, 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 and its state space is a weak star compact convex subset, of its dual space. And if A is separable and SA is a weak star compact, then SA, the state space, is metrizable in the weak star topology. But if but since a, but a separable space uh, metric space is second countable. So as the state space is second countable and as a consequence is first countable. And in this way, we can move from the separability of the algebra. And of course, the fact that it is a unital star algebra, okay, never forget that because we need it here. We move from the separability to the, weak, to the first countability of the state space, which is the first step in the argument. Now, in the second, I mean, in the following, we start from the weak start of, uh, from the uh, first countability of the state space. And that means that, I mean, the first countability condition is that there is a countable local base of neighborhoods in the weak start topology, countable. And in terms then of this countable local base, we can define in this way a nested local base. What do we mean by a nested local base? A local base that as we uh, increase the index, we, uh, it narrows down towards the state actually. Of course, we can now take each neighborhood in the nested local base as corresponding to an experiment, a monitoring experiment. And in this way, we have the desired convergence because it's not a convergence, okay? That if we take the infinite intersection of these neighborhoods, 
we isolate the state. So in the limit of empirical research, where, where, where uh, every experiment, every experiment becomes, let's say, reveals all the, uh, more information about the state, in the limit, we have the state. So if we start, let me return to the slide with the outline of the, of the argument. If we start with the assumption that A is unital and separable, we can justify the claim that strong empirical and determination thesis is false. Good. Can we find unit algebras of observables? We can find them. But separable ones, what's going on there? Now, <clears throat> at this point, Alec Gorgis admits that many sister algebras of physical interest will not satisfy these conditions. And so one cannot invariably assume the first countability of the weak star topology on the corresponding state spaces. And echoing this view, Porman, 10 years later, notices in his PhD, th oh no, this is not, it's, it's a paper, not in his PhD thesis. While being concerned with the separable Hilbert space, is common from a physicist's point of view, the corresponding requirement on the sister algebra is too restrictive to be encountered in physically reasonable theories from the outset. And from this point on starts my, let's say my original contribution to this work, okay? And not just a reconstruction. Now, what I did actually is that I tried to find cases of interesting, physically interesting cases, phys of physically interesting theories, uh, in which uh, in which we have either uh, separable algebras of observables or non-separable algebras of observables, and I have that, and and try to understand what is going on there. The first case that I discuss in the paper. Uh, has to do with systems of n classical particles. Okay, n classical particles, uh, the phase space of the n classical particles is a subset of R2n. And the particle's motion is assumed bounded in physical space to make things uh, easier. And the energy also is bounded. So uh, the subset uh, gamma of the R2n is a compact subset. So the phase space is compact. And of course, the observables are represented by self-adjoint elements of the sister algebra of complex valued continuous functions of a compact domain. These are the observables. And we have then a mathematical fact that the algebra is separable. And of course, the state space is first countable. And if we have this, then we have the falsity of the, B co of the A component of the strong empirical underdetermination thesis as the argument requires. I mean, the argument, uh, R. Gerges's argument concludes for systems of N classical particles restricted in a region uh, uh, in the phase space. Just to clarify, Valent, it's, it's uh, so no representation of the CCRs in this context. Is that right? No, no, no. I, I, I don't refer to CCRs at all. And one wouldn't be possible here, though, in this context, right? Because there being a compact set, the spectrum of the of the position operator would be bounded, and so so you wouldn't you wouldn't have any any. Bile algebra. Ever. Yes, I, I yeah I don't have I I don't have generators. Okay. Thanks. I mean, uh, the generators are, need to be unbounded, right? Uh, of the vial algebra, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, the next step, the next, I mean, system that I am discussing is uh, the Heisenberg model for ferromagnetism, okay? Here we have a finite number of atoms of spin one half placed at fixed lattice sites. And the model describes the spin-spin interaction between the nearest neighbors. Now, 
to construct the algebra of observables here, we uh, uh, we say that at each lattice point, we have one atom. So uh, the algebra corresponding to the atom in the lattice side is uh, the complex, uh, is the algebra of the complex mat square matrices. Uh, of order two, and then to uh, construct the algebra of uh, uh, for a finite region of the d-dimensional lattice, which has, I mean, a, a finite region, and the cardinality of that region denotes the uh, the number of atoms that we have there. So uh, we take the direct sum, the direct sorry product of these algebras, uh, which is uh, isomorphic to the complex square matrices to the algebra of complex square matrices of order to uh, to v to the cardinality of v and this is uh, the algebra of uh, of the finite region so the local algebra in the lattice to obtain the algebra of observables uh, of an infinite lattice we should construct a net Okay, we should construct a net, and this net uh, to its to, to its region of the of the lattice to its finite region uh, of the lattice uh, we, that is included in the uh, in another finite region. We have the same relation of inclusion between the algebras. And we uh, the 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 union of all of all algebra of all local algebras uh, is a star is a is a norm star algebra and the uniform closure of of the union is a UHF algebra a ultra high uh, hyperfinite algebra and this is the quasi local algebra of the spin system now. Since a von Neumann algebra, and this is again a mathematical fact, is separable all, if and only if it is finite dimensional, we reach the conclusion that the local algebras are separable in the, in the, in the uh, Heisenberg system, in the Heisenberg model. And of course, if we try to completely determine, if we try to completely determine the uh, local state of the system in terms of monitoring experiments, we can do that. And the strong empirical determination thesis, the A part of it is false regarding local states. Uh, regarding the states in the quasi-local algebra, we have another fact here that all UHF algebras are separable. So again, we can do the same thing with the quasi-local algebra, and we can uh, and we can completely determine the state, the state of the uh, the state of the of the physical system, the global, the, the, not the global, but the uh, the state that corresponds to the quasi-local algebra, in the light of possible evidence. So again. So again, the strong empirical determination thesis is false. Now, <clears throat> of course, if things remained here, things would be easy, let's say, for the argument, I mean. But if we take a GNS representation of the quasi-local algebra in terms of a tracial state, we get a hyperfinite to one factor. Hyperfinite to one factors are infinite dimensional algebras. So this algebra is non separable. And in this case, Aragorgis's argument is inconclusive. So as we move from the quasi local algebra in the Heisenberg system to uh, a specific representation of it in terms of a tracial state, we get the non-separability, as if, let's say, I don't know, I, 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 I don't have 
many more things to say here. Uh, but it seems as if a separability is an emergent property, ma emergent mathematical property, as we move from uh, the, uh, the sister algebras to the von Neumann algebras here. Okay, or it can be something like that. But I don't have more things to say on that. Now, uh, the other cases that I have studied have to do with algebraic quantum theory. And uh, here I, I mean, here things uh, are difficult for uh, the condition of separability. And we can see that if we take a Hagar a theory, a quantum system in the Hagaraki description, satisfying the usual axioms, that is isometry, weak additivity, locality, primitive causality, Poincare covariance, and spectrum conditions, some of them might not be needed for the, uh, actually they are not needed for the results that I am going to use, but I put them all here for completeness. So consider a, a Hagaraki system in this, uh, defined in this way. And for several moderns of physical significance, the local algebras of four finite regions are type three algebras. This is well known. And for many models with no super selection sector, the global algebra is a type one for Neumann factor. But uh, type three, or type one infinite von Neumann factors are infinite dimensional algebras, hence non-separable. And again, Aragorgis's line of reasoning against the strong empirical and determination thesis is inconclusive. And I think that Aragorgis had this in mind when he talked about uh, cases of physical significance rather than the other cases. I mean, the finite dimensional case in the, uh, the classical system or the uh, Heisenberg uh, ferromagnetism model. Pohlmann, however, suggested a separable formulation of algebraic quantum field theory. Now, uh, Pohlmann, considered a denumerable dense subgroup of the Poincaré orthochronous group. And he applied this transformation, I mean, from the dense subgroup to, uh, to uh, double cones with rational radii, you see. In order, and he obtained in this way a countable family of open bounded regions which have the following uh, desirable uh, features, okay? It is a countable base for the Euclidean topology of R4, and it is invariable under the geometric transformations as constructed. I mean, the geometric transformations, I'm referring to the uh, countable uh, subgroup, okay? Now then, uh, he started with... Uh, a net of algebras indexed by finite regions of uh, Minkowski space-time. And these are, uh, his assumption is that we have just sister algebras, not von Neumann algebras, but they are uh, on, uh, these sister algebras are on a separable, sub-algebras of a separable Hilbert space. And then he constructed a net of separable sister algebras. I, I, I'm not going to refer to the details of this construction. But the idea is that for every uh, sister algebra, there is a dense, a separable dense subalgebra. And by this mathematical fact, we may, uh, we may construct, uh, I mean, we, we may find for each algebra corresponding to the OK regions that are found in the Gothic R which is the, the, the geometric part, uh, we can find a, a separable algebra as a subalgebra of the, of the corresponding sister algebra. And uh, in this way, in this way, 
by construction, the net satisfies the conditions of isotony, locality, and covariance with respect, with respect to this group, however, to the dense subgroup. And finally, we can, since we have this net here of separable algebras, we may define the separable quasi-local algebra as the inductive limit of this net. And of course, since here everything is separable, the strong empirical determination thesis is false. Uh, these are the cases that I have examined. And let me now summarize these, uh, I mean, the conclusions uh, I have reached. In this talk, we discussed Ara Georgis' argument against the strong empirical and determination thesis, focusing on the refutation of subthesis A, which rests on the separability of the algebra of observables. Uh, the separability is a condition, sorry, the separability is a condition related to two factors. One factor is the dimension of the algebra considered as a vector space. And the other factor is whether the algebra is a C-star or a von Neumann algebra. So we have these cases here. Uh, strong empirical de determination thesis is false in cases of finite dimensional C-star algebras and on, of finite dimensional von Neumann algebras. In the case of infinite dimensional algebras, such as the UHF algebra, we have one case in which, again, this is false. And in the cases of von Neumann algebras that are infinite dimensional, uh, here we have, uh, I mean, the answer is negative. I mean, the argument, the argument against the strong empirical and determination thesis is inconclusive. So we don't know whether the strong empirical and determination thesis uh, is true or false, at least on the basis of this argument. Let me say one word here because it may, uh, it may seem strange that I put a plus there. And on what basis did I put this plus here? Since the only, the only uh, system that I have examined is the, uh, is the classical, is the, cla is the system of n classical particles, n classical particles. Okay. And, I mean, I didn't refer, uh, and also, and also the local algebras, the local algebras uh, in the, in the Heisenberg model okay but this result can be uh, can be more general since any finite algebra is isomorphic to a finite direct sum of complex square matrix algebras of a finite dimension and of course these algebras are separable algebras and since its component of the sum contains a countable dense subset of elements and the Cartesian product of a countable set is countable, we conclude that the direct sum of complex square matrix algebras is separable. So in this way, we can justify the general conclusion that in finite dimensional algebras, we have uh, the, the, the argument conclude uh, to the falsity of the strong empirical underdetermination thesis. Of course, the first countability of the state space may be inferred from conditions other than the separability of the algebra of observables. And this is left open, okay, obviously. And uh, regarding Porma's suggestion, it is not clear to me, and I don't know, I mean, whether one can start from a countable family of Minkowski space-time region and the corresponding separable local algebras and subsequently recover under any reasonable conditions the full physical content of a hag kastler theory. Okay, because, okay, is it a toy model or is it something more important than that? Okay, this is a question pending, okay. Uh, that's all. I would like to thank you all for your attention. I hope I wasn't boring. <laughs> and uh, thanks again. Thanks. Thank you all.